Hello and welcome to the 3D Experience. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running quick. I'll start with information for everyone, such as logging in for the first time, customizing the environment, and working with tools that I deemed most essential. Then I'll move on to the necessities for any designer, such as where your data is stored, how to search and browse for content, and how to work with and generally manage your files. By now, you have likely received an invitation email to join your company's platform. And this was sent out by your platform's administrator when they assigned you licenses, which are also known as roles. This email contains a link to the 3D Experience platform cloud onboarding page, where you'll find onboarding videos, online support, getting started guides, and other documentation. It also includes an eligibility checking tool that will automatically look over your computer setup and ensure you have the necessary components to fully utilize 3D Experience. If you haven't followed this link before, I'd recommend you actually pause this video and do so now. The 3D Experience uses named user licensing. So when you follow the sign in or create a new 3D Experience ID link from the invitation, the email address or username you use is all you will ever need to access the platform from any device. And if you run into any issues logging in, try clearing your browser cache or simply logging in through a Google Chrome incognito window. Once logged in, you will be greeted with a getting started dashboard that likely contains both a getting started and a learn the experience tab. You may also have access to additional getting started template dashboards such as the 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS dashboard that can be accessed through the dashboard list. Let's add a completely new dashboard. And instead of customizing one of the existing templates, I'll start with a clean slate. I'm going to set up my first tab for communities and the compass in the top left gives me access to all of my apps and can be searched by app name or filtered by role. Any app with an arrow in its top right hand corner is called a widget and can be dragged onto a dashboard. The 3D Swim app is where communities are, and if you have the permissions for it, you can create a new one right here under the List My Communities button. When creating a community, the owner essentially becomes the moderator of content and can also invite or remove members at will. After a community is created, you'll want to visit its settings where you can add additional detail and also manage its visibility. A secret community is known only to its members where a private community can be found by all, but membership must be requested. In a public community, all users of your platform become members automatically. When adding new members or user groups, contributor access only allows for commenting on existing posts instead of creating new ones so most users will be authors with post creation privileges. You'll likely only need one or two owners who are full content and membership administrators. Community posts are a scrolling feed and it can be convenient to switch between a contents view, which shows recent posts and a timeline view, which shows all recent activity, including comments on older posts. There is a number of different post types you can make and communities can by, be filtered by post type in the top right hand corner of the 3D Swim app. If you want to make sure a post isn't missed by someone in particular, try the share by link or simply at mention them in a comment and they'll receive a platform notification. And speaking of notifications, the 3D Notification Center is always available at the top right hand corner of your screen and it's a good idea to review the settings here so that they are adjusted to your liking. The communities I've discussed so far are specific to your platform, but there are public communities out there that function as the 3D Experience forums. Let's add a second tab to this dashboard, add another 3D Swim app, but this time I'll edit the preferences of the app itself and change the platform to Dassault Systems. Filtering a community by wiki posts can be particularly convenient because a wiki tree structure appears essentially bookmarking the post deemed most important by the community owner. Of course, you can add a bookmark of your own to any post, and that will be available to you when viewing the What's New section of your communities. 
every 3D experience user also has access to at least five gigabytes of data storage through 3D Drive. And this can be installed as a local folder on your computer and accessed without logging into your platform. Files stored here are automatically shown up in the platform and can be shared with others, published to 3D Swim, and generally managed. An information tab gives you access to comments, sharing permissions, who has access, and even a restorable history of previous versions of these files. When it comes to viewing the files, you could add a 3D Play app to your dashboard, but hitting Preview from inside of 3D Drive automatically takes you there. And this is a file viewer similar to eDrawings, so you're free to measure, section, explode, and even mark up the geometry. Once satisfied, publishing back to a post in 3D Swim is just another option in the toolbar. There are many more apps to explore just inside this collaborative business innovator role. And once you've customized the dashboard to your liking, it can actually be easily shared with others. Sharing a copy of the dashboard to users or by link provides a snapshot of the layout similar to a template. But managing membership of a dashboard can leave it synchronized for future updates. A reader of the dashboard can only view its contents where a contributor can edit the contents of any widget, but is not able to change its properties, size, or arrangement on the dashboard. And of course, an owner has full permissions to, the, to alter the synchronized dashboard completely. Now that I've covered some of the functionality and navigation needed by all users, I'll move on to information specific to anyone using a data creating or authoring application. Starting with where the data itself is stored, that is, in a collaborative space. The 3D Space app gives you access to all spaces you're a member of. And if you have permissions for it, you can create new spaces here as well. When creating a space, it can be set to private, protected, or public. And when choosing public and making content visible to all members, you can also specify that the family or type of data in the space is standard content instead of design content. Standard content is generally catalog or library components that will never change. And you can plug standard content into your currently developing designs, but not the other way around. It's really best practice to have a small number of 3D spaces company-wide. And I would suggest maybe only having three. One for all design projects, one for off-the-shelf components, and one for company templates and non-CAD libraries. If all that sounds confusing, when in doubt, use the default settings. 3D Experience is set up to work best with out-of-the-box settings. When adding individual members or user groups, a contributor is essentially just a viewer with read-only access, while most users are going to be working as an author. A leader can do just about everything with the data in a space, while an owner is a special role reserved for taking administrative actions, such as managing space membership. Now, once a space is created and data is stored in it, you'll be tempted to browse and search through it. Filters called 6W tags can be found just to the right of the search bar at the top of your screen. And these filters apply to whatever widget is currently active. Once you've found what you're looking for, file information gives you access to comments, history, and file properties. You can even choose to preview the file, which will take you back to 3D Play. But in my opinion, there is a much better way to search and browse data. And I would suggest you just forget about 3D Spaces at this point and switch over to the 3D Search app. 3D Search can be added as a widget to your dashboard, but it's actually always available as the search bar at the top of your screen. Notice it can be used to search the current tab as well as many advanced search options. And I find the My Content Search particularly useful especially when shown in the data grid layout. This search shows all content that is visible to me and has customizable columns that can be sorted similar to Windows Explorer. Be aware that if you're not seeing a file that you've just created, it may just not be indexed yet. And in that case, you can choose to show content created in the last five minutes. The 6W tags are also available for filtering and you'll find the file information is much more extensive. To prevent repeating this search in the future, you can save it as a favorite or simply pin it to your dashboard. 
You can directly open files from 3D Search, and I'd recommend having a look at the file's relations. This app shows the extremely useful information of how content is connected and it cannot be found under the compass, so I highly recommend you pin this one to the dashboard as well. I like the way this tab is looking, so I'm gonna use the fit option for this one, minimize 3D space, and replace it with a bookmark editor. This app serves as a working folder structure with customizable columns and also provides tools for file properties, relationships, collaboration, file deletion, and even lifecycle operations like revisions, and maturity control. Be sure to check the preferences of the widget itself as the bookmarks are also stored in a collaborative space. And I'd also recommend allowing products to expand, which is useful when working with assemblies. Finally, let's create a dashboard tab for a design app, in this case, XShape. When creating a new component, I can choose which collaborative space to save into, and choosing open simply takes me to a 3D search showing only content that is accessible to me and can be opened in XShape. Checking the desired file and choosing OK brings it into XShape, but I often use a drag and drop operation. Let's switch back to the previous tab, duplicate my bookmark editor, and drag it over to the XShape tab. I might fit these two tabs tight again, and now I can simply drag and drop from my bookmarks straight into a design app. Now that you've seen how to store, search, and browse your data, it's time to dive into the tools themselves. For in-depth learning paths and tutorials for individual roles, log in to my.solidworks.com, choose Training, Learning Paths, and filter to 3D Experience where you'll find a number of courses to explore. Of course, MLC CAD System is always here to help you, so stay tuned for additional videos just like this one.